washing machines. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not all they do, but no, I, I know. I'm joking. They, they do all kinds of things. GE is in turbines. They're in engines. They're in uh, trains, automobiles. They are in uh, semiconductors, electronics. They, they're almost too diversified. In my opinion, they're not super specialized at this point. A lot of industrial stuff. So, Leah says, therein lies a problem. Bingo, they're no longer specialists. And I, I did a college write-up on GE um, back in like 2005. And even then, I was like, ah, I don't think this is that great. You know? Anyway, I'm not playing GE personally. That's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. But what did replace GE was Walgreens Boots Alliance. Walgreens on the Dow Jones. Now look at this trend. Type in a three if you can see an obvious difference between the chart of Walgreens and GE. I'm not saying you should buy Walgreens necessarily, but what I am saying is when you're looking at this chart, there are some obvious differences. Right? And Walgreens, they are pretty specific. I do know how Walgreens makes money. And this was a beautiful gap today. I got to be, uh, what time is it, 4.38? I can go a little bit long today, just not a lot of long. Um, Walgreens was, how do I explain this? Man, the perfect retest gap. Perfect. If anybody wants to know, what is the perfect bullish retest gap look like? This is it. And I squandered it. I lost on Walgreens because I was a giant turtle. White candle gapping up above a bunch of pivots. Boom, boom. It was only up like three and a half percent. So it wasn't a huge gap, which is perfect. It's a dividend paying stock. It was bouncing off of support, right? It's a longer term uptrend. Everyone likes Walgreens. Beautiful gap. Now I'm gonna go into the five minute chart and Type in a three if you see the most obvious S-curve of all time. I mean, come on. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that S-car. That was so nice. <laughs> now, what did I do? <laughs> so I turned on the extended hours, which is not a problem. Uh, I turned on the extended hours, and I played – let me zoom in a little bit more. I played the bullish break above uh, the pre-market high. So here's the pre-market high, or some pre-market highs. Upper wick, upper wick, and I got in right there, had my stop right there, and got stopped out. So funny. So funny because, yeah, on a retest gap, Benjamin, I know. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> I'm, I, I got to make fun of myself for this one, folks. This is like being in the Super Bowl and throwing a pick six. I mean, this, this is an undefeated Patriots team losing to the Giants bad. I can't, that was one of the worst plays I think I've made this year. It was so amateur for me to buy right there. Because... When I was setting up that trade, my instinct said, hey, dude, you got a huge white candle here, huge white candle here, and a huge white candle there. If you get in there, you know it's going to retest at least a little bit. Right? So what? How did I? Ah, oh, geez. So here's, here's what I'm going to do um, to, to punish myself for getting the timing wrong on this one. I'm going to back trade this gap probably 100 times between now and tomorrow. Candle by candle, on the one minute, on the two minute, on the three minute, on the five minute, it's going to burn it into my brain until my arms are sore because I, I should not have entered there. Now, the good news is that one trade is going to make me a better trader for the next four to five months. And then I'm going to have another stupid mistake because I'm human. And I'm going to go, man, what an idiot. And then I'm going to go and <laughs> I'm going to do something else. Um, <laughs> Peter says, you should join Real Life Trading. I know. I'm telling you. I mean, look at the bounce off the 10. This is blatant. It's honestly frustrating how, how poorly I played because I could have I played Walgreens for three, four hours. Easy. 
Easy. And it bounced off the 100 on the daily? Wow. I traded that stock like a two-legged dog buries a bone in an ice pond. Not good. But I did trade another one good since we're talking about my, my failures. I'll talk about a winner. Uh, I did play this one pretty well. Uh, Camping World, CWH. So Camping World, I did buy on the retest uh, here. Sorry. This is, this is the swing trade. I'm sorry. I was like, I didn't buy away the heck up there. Um, I did play the retest on this one. Uh, I have this one posted in Slack. Something like this with a stop right there. Something like that because this did S-curve pre-market. So that was the S-curve pre-market. So I got in on a pullback when it was forming that pennant. I held through this whole retracement right here and then I sold up there. So I did make more money than I lost today in the day trading world. Uh, so I can't beat myself up too much about it. Uh, I can't remember if CWH is on this list today. Well, looks like I'm gonna add it. So um, bottom line, I mean, that was also a bullish retest gap and I did play that one much better. But instead of having uh, you know, a 0.6R gain on the day trades, I could have easily had you know, a 4R day. So yes, folks, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to flub it up sometimes. But as far as the swing trade goes, uh, yes, please. We're going to be setting this one up and we're going to come back to this tomorrow because I like the volume. I like the gap. It's above the 50. It's a retest gap. Also, weekly chart. Look at that volume. What I also love about this is uh, it broke support. Guess who shorted right there? Me, nine years ago. <laughs> when I was 20, I was short right there. I would go, this is the time. Now it has confirmed, finally, that it broke, broke support. This is where I will short it because it's going to go lower now. You know, after it's dropped 57% in value, this is when I will short the stock. So anyway, you know there was a bunch of newbies who did that. Um, Anyway, so they're trapped. So yeah, we're gonna look for this one to go a little bit higher. CWH on the list for tomorrow. Uh, Donald says, are you out of the HPE swing trade? Yes, I did get stopped out today. We're gonna talk about that as well. Um, I got stopped out of Guess. I might as well talk about it now. I got stopped out of Guess and Hewlett Packard today. So those are my swing trades. So let's talk about Hewlett Packard. So even though I had positive day trades, I did get stopped out of this swing. And what I love about it though, is um, I would have moved my stop up to 4, 1560 had I not got stopped out today. But what I love about this is the reason this candle broke so hard, you guys wanna know, is because the wave rotation got invalidated, right? In pink is what Hewlett Packard should have done. Should have done that. And since it did not break above the 20, it got invalidated. That's why it sold off so hard today because there was a bunch of people trapped like me. Um, now, could it bounce again? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're, we actually traded right back down to where we bounced literally on the 31st of May. So we could, buy, we could bounce again and we're actually up five cents pre-market. But I only lost small on Hewlett Packard, about 0.6 R's because we did move up our stop. So I lost on Hewlett Packard, um, 0.6 R's, which wiped out all of my day trading gains. So if it wasn't for that, I was break even. And then I got stopped out on GES. I got stopped out on GUESS. And uh, we did lose on GUESS a full R, or at least I did. Some of you else got out earlier. Uh, so I actually am down an R on the day with a blend between day trading and swing trading. But that's realized. So I guessed wrong, as Sharon says. <laughs> that's right. Um, so that's GES. Those are the two swing trades. Uh, we do have QD open. We still have CSCO. We still have Pivotal, and then we have these two. So anyway, um, I might look at, well, not might. I'm going to look at guests on Monday of next week, which is Merchant Monday. And I'm going to see if I can play that one bullish now that I got stopped out. 
James says, Hewlett Packard announces a $4 billion buyback after hours. Any lift? Uh, that's a good question. It's up a little bit. Yeah, 65 cents. Uh, oh, shoot. It's gapping above the high of today. Snapdragons. James Gerard, ladies and gentlemen, throwing you guys free money. Guess who's looking at Hewlett Packard tomorrow and has two thumbs? This guy. Okay, uh, I will watch Hewlett Packard. How beautiful would that be if the market stopped me out of Hewlett Packard Enterprises just long enough to announce a four dollar billion, four billion dollar buyback, and then the stock goes higher? If I'm wrong, be wrong. Be wrong quickly, and then if things change, get back in. Don't even worry about it. No hesitation. No fear. Just money. Not a problem. All right, we're gonna get through the rest in the next thirty minutes or so. Here's Campbell's. What the heck is Campbell's doing? Ooh, Campbell's. Now, if we go to a weekly chart, um, type in a seven if this chart still doesn't look as bad as GE. <laughs> uh, it still doesn't look as bad. I mean, it's making higher highs and higher lows. It just takes 20 years, but it's getting there. I would rather buy Campbell's than GE. I don't have positions in either, but I would rather buy Campbell's. I know for sure how Campbell's makes money, and I love that chunky chicken noodle soup. Chicken pot pie, are you serious? Yes, please. Get me a sandwich and some Campbell's chunky, I'm there. I'm showing up, not good for me, but. And the other problem is uh, the healthy choice is terrible. <laughs> which is usually the case. Healthy choice is like, bleh, it tastes healthy. So, you know, I don't eat soup that often, but it probably has a lot of sodium. Anyway, it's good. However, if one were looking at picking up some chunky on Campbell's, you can play a longer term position getting in here, maybe even with a protective put trigger down here. Um, you could also, I mean, yeah, longer term, you could also consider selling some puts down here. Maybe this is the bottom, maybe not, but, uh, yeah, I actually like it. As far as a shorter term trade, here's the hourly chart. Charles says he'd rather buy GE than Sears. Uh, yes. Two thumbs up on that. Here's the hourly. This is a pretty pennant pattern, triangle, whatever you want to call it. And if this thing breaks out, S curve that beast higher. So whoever requested Campbell's, it looks good. Is this the bottom? I don't know. I've called the bottom on Campbell's uh, before, and it was not the bottom. <laughs> and I was wrong. <laughs> not that that's ever happened before. That well, was the first time. First time. Back in 2016, this is what I said on Campbell's. It said Campbell's longer term wait and then buy. So I thought it was going to retest and just trade down to 47. It did retest and it did go lower. I nailed that part, but it went a little bit lower than I thought. So I knew not to buy there, at least. Uh, I did have some traders buy at 47 and then they got stopped out at 44. And now it's all the way back down here again at 37. So just something to consider, up to you, but shorter term. I can kind of dig it. Okay, next on the list is LNG. LNG. This is the daily chart, looks delish. Uh, I have two or three traders in on this one. And if you're in, stay in. And if you're not in, does that look like a bullish trend to you? The answer, when we come back after this series of commercials. But yeah, it does. It looks like a uh, bullish trend. Why did that change from, huh? Sorry, I was 97% positive I was recording. Weird. I thought I was recording on the computer, but it says I'm recording on the cloud. Sorry. All right. Man, technology has been my best friend this week. <laughs> we have done so many fun things together, technology. Resistance, stop. 
If you're playing a shorter term trade on LNG, buy that dip, stop below those two candles. That is a wicked pair of candle set right here, and it looks delish. Trend is bullish, volume is bullish. This was, I believe, one of the stocks I was most bullish on um, back in 2017, and it just never did anything. But then it did break out in 2018, right at the end of the year, had a beautiful S curve. So if you're in LNG, stay in. If you're not in, buy the dip. I don't have any position in LNG, but it looks good. Here is JP Morgan. Morgan, 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 Morgan. JP Morgan, this is the daily chart, right? Chia. And Jaden has a 120 covered call. We're bouncing off the 20. I can almost tell you what JP Morgan's gonna do. Uh, I like this gap today. Nice little white candle gapping up, made a higher high and a higher low. Uh, <laughs> that is hilarious. Ashley, how did you log into that? That is so funny. Sorry. Wow, how did you log in? Money. Anyway, sorry, Ashley was texting or something. I wasn't picking up my phone. Sorry that I was in a webinar. <laughs> my bad. All right. Here's what I think we're gonna do on JP Morgan. I like this gap, so we're gonna do this. Trade down a little bit lower, wick down, and slowly continue higher on JP Morgan. Could be a bear flag, yes. I like this support a lot. Obviously, you have a major support on JPM. Morgan and Morgan and Morgan and Morgan. We know where the support is, it's at 105. As long as it can hold that support, should be good. James says the bank stress test results are coming. Let Jay says, yep, coming tomorrow. So here's the weekly and the weekly moving averages uh, doing its thing. Here's the daily doing its thing. So yeah, we're at the 200. If you're playing it, I'll be watching the hourly chart for a little bit of a lower low tomorrow, potentially, and then um, start figuring out what to do from there. James says, banks will be given cash to return more cash to shareholders. Best of the best, JP Morgan. All right. Donnie says, Jeremy, Donnie and I, sorry, Sharon says, Donnie and I laugh at that commercial all the time. Morgan, 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 Morgan. It cracks me up. I like I like the guy, but it's, it's just a funny commercial. It's very, uh, it sticks with you though. We still have plenty of stocks left. We have plenty of time. U.S. Steel. Folks, I talked about doing a put sale on this one yesterday. Unfortunately, there just was not enough premium. I don't really want to go into August, uh, but, 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 I do trade U.S. Steel directionally all the time. Um, and what I would do on that one is uh, make it continue higher. Jacob says, what do you mean by premium? Uh, so are you familiar with selling puts, Jacob? He says, no. All right. I will send you a video. Email me. Um, all right. So U.S. Steel, hourly chart, double bottom. Looks like a good double bottom. Um, Jeff says, how do you plan X directionally? Stay tuned about 20 seconds, Mr. Hall, and I'll tell you. So we got a double bottom on US Steel, a very good break above that resistance, very good break above that resistance. I like this double bottom and it already retested earlier today. So what I would like to see is really just US Steel to continue higher. It had a very nice bullish one white soldier today um, extended hours. It looks like it's going to continue up a little bit. So you have a few choices. You could have a support here and a support here and do half an R each. So here's half an R and here's half an R. So take a little bit on the breakout just in case it retests, do the other half. Stop would be down here somewhere around 3440, 3420 or 34, depending on your time frame. And that's really it. I like the new white soldier. I love the candle. I'll be watching to play U.S. Steel directionally, either with July calls or just straight up shares. Jacob says, I see a video on your YouTube channel about put sales. That's the one. Watch it. Get back to me. All right. U.S. Steel. We're going to look at tomorrow afternoon. Um, just in case. 
you know, it does not break above the high. I can plan this 18 hours in advance. Stop right there, entry right there, but that would really be how you'd play it. Looks pretty good. Earnings for today on MU, that is correct. I think we have this one on the list. Yep, it's coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, next on the list is VIPS, V-I-P-S. VIPS and uh, see what happens from there. Joseph says, Jeremy, I went to the website and did not see the 179 price. Let me try to help you out with that, Joseph. Go to reallifetrain.com. It should be on the very front page. If you guys want in, the link should be there. If you click that, you have to scroll and it's right there. Two clicks away. If you can't find it, let me know. But that's it, my brother. Boop. Right there. That's all the goodies. Ram says, is it for learning options? Uh, what do you mean, Ram? All right, so we talked about this yesterday. We mentioned that it had a beautiful hammer candle, and it does. So I like this little bearish candle today. Let me look at it on a weekly one more time. I think we're going to be setting up VIPs bullish as well. Yes, we are. All right, let me come in here to the hourly chart. Let me just look at this pre-market volume. Interesting. A lot of pre-market resistance on this Ram says it is is it access to the chat room or will there be some materials to learn the language of options uh, both I do everything Ram I'll give you all of it my man don't not buy because you think you're not going to get something that's the worst reason to buy the only reason you should not be buying the trading room is because you literally have no money if you have $1 in your bank account and no brokerage and no trading account, then don't sign up. Otherwise, don't, don't not sign up because you're afraid you're not going to get something. Brenda says, you said today to give you four months, so that's what I'm signing up for. I, and that, hey, I appreciate that, Brenda. That's okay. That means a lot to me, and I'll, all I can say is thank you for that. That's all I ask. Just give me four months of your time. The amount of information you're going to learn is incredible, and if four months is – Email me at the end of four months and we'll chat. If it's not for you, no big deal. If it is for you, great. If you want to get better, we'll figure out what we can do, but I do not think you'll be disappointed. Uh, and I appreciate it, Miss Bailey. Thank you. I mean, I'm excited to learn more about who you are. Um, so here's what I want to do on VIPs. I do want to go bullish. Uh, I'm going to tweak this one a little bit. I'm going to enter here with a stop and then I'm going to do a limit lower. So 11.69, that's gonna be the stop, right? That's the trigger. And um, I'm gonna do a limit buy pretty much at this high, 11.56. Joseph, uh, I plan the trade 18 hours in advance and if the trade does what I want it to do, the next day I will set the trade up. So this is the exact definition of that. I did it yesterday and now we're setting it up. Um, I'll also show you how to set this up um, in trading view. I'm sorry, I think or swim, trend analysis, chart patterns. Uh, I like that hammer from yesterday. Cheryl says it will hit resistance before 2R. Maybe. It might. Also could keep running though. I like it. Uh, there's a lot of room to go. Camille says, can you explain the stop? I will, Camille, give me about 27 seconds and I got you. Let me just put it in the worksheet. 6-20-2018 VIPS 11.56 is what we're gonna be basing the entry off of and the amount of shares off of. 10.68, I should've just done one hour risk. Dollar 1068, uh, good based on uh, a retest gap open because it's not triggered yet. And so, again, VIPS, if we come back here to the daily chart, uh, really, I mean, you have some resistance here at this gap, but that is a retest gap which could fill. 
and we're bouncing off support. So yes, we, we might peel off a little bit off at one R. But let's ask this question. Theoretically, could VIPs get up to $19? I have to say so. Um, Benjamin says, do you set trading view alerts for these to help you know when to get in or do you have a certain time of the day to check for swings? Um, so I just showed you Benjamin, me entering one trade. I'm gonna go do another one now. Uh, so pretty much I just set them up. Hold on one second, trying to share the screen. I think that's the wrong screen. Okay, let me try this again. Uh, Render says OCO. Yep, that's exactly what I just did minutes ago. So share the screen. You should be looking at trading view, type in a one, or uh, think or swim, type in a one if that's the case. Sorry, I'm a little clunkily. I'm just on a different computer. I usually don't broadcast from this computer. This is normally my trading computer. All right, so here's VIPs. This is the exact trade. So now you're gonna be seeing firsthand all I do um, is I've used the numbers on the other screen that we have going on here. So this is think or swim. I right click the chart, I come to buy custom, I go OCO bracket, right Ben, type in one if you follow me so far. Come over here to limit, I type stop limit. I type in 1169, that is the triggering order uh, right here at 1169, that's the stop. The limit is the price that I actually wanna buy it off of, that's 1156. So I wanna get filled at this limit, this is the stop, this is the limit. So 1169 is where I wanted to get triggered into. Uh, the stop loss is already almost there, 1068. And then the limit sell for now, I'm just gonna put it at 18. You know, I, I don't know if it'll run up that high, but maybe it does, right? Maybe 1856. And then I just take 1156 minus 1068, come up with 88 cents, 500 divided by 88 cents, 568 shares. Gonna make that good till canceled. And then come over here, 568. Five sixty-eight. Benjamin says that is so smart. Yeah, man. But the computer didn't work for me. And then once it's a good till cancel, you just set up the trade. That's it. So here's the limit sell for profit, here's the stop loss, and here's the entry. So from here, I just set it up and walk away. It's good to cancel, we'll get that going on, and then uh, we'll go look at another one. Cool. Type in one if you guys see trading view. I just wanna make sure I got eight screens to flip back and forth from, fantastic. Cool, uh, next one is DocuSign, D-O-C-U. DocuSign, a little bit of a bearish candle still. Uh, James says, is that gray box normal? Probably not. I think you can move it out the way though, James. You should be able to move it out the way on your end. Unless it's the top right hand side, in which case, I don't think you can move it. So DocuSign, uh, there's some traders in on this one, bullish. I, I was talking about it yesterday. This is not the candle that I want to go in bullish. I talked about yesterday. Um, I discussed it yesterday. I said I need an inside day candle on DocuSign. I'm checking my notes. Inside day candle on DocuSign, and then we'll take the breakout. We did not get an inside day candle, so I'm going to keep waiting on DocuSign. Let's put this one on the list for... Uh, Tuesday of next week, D-O-C-U, and go from there. I think it's going to chop around for a bit, but I do think this is a good bullish trend. Short term, this is a wave three. One, two, three, four, five. I think we go higher. The question is when. Let's give it a little bit of time. Next, Plains All-American, PAA. I'm going to start turning on the speed burners. Plains All-American, here's the weekly charts. We trade down to a massive weekly support from 2016 and back here at 19 just a few months ago. It is a buy low, sell high. Still looks better than GE. You actually have a bullish trend over the last 20 years. Here's the daily charts. And if I turn the long-term moving averages on Plains All-American, we're above them. You have a pretty decent candle. So if I was going bullish on Plains All-American, I would get in above the high of today's bearish candle and I'll place my stop a little low of that bullish candle. 
Um, and I look forward to trade it higher. It looks bullish to me. And uh, rock and roll. All right, next on the list, Shopify. Take some S H O P and Shopify crushing. Wow, Shopify. So what I need to do at this point is uh, figure out Shopify hit my 2018 target. I need to figure out where we're going next. So this was 169.44. We're pausing right there. So this was a very, very good trade on Shopify. Uh, a lot of traders making just stupid money on this stock. So I'm gonna take this entry and bring it up to here and kind of chat it up from there. Uh, Ricky, if there's one suggestion I can have, it would be to make sure you meet Jill. Amazing human being, man. Connect with her. She's probably right down the road, so to speak. Next target, 235. 235, so entry, something like this. Uh, Kinsley says, what happens when the market opens with a gap when you have the trade set up already? Uh, that will happen sometimes. <laughs> if it's a swing trade, remember Kinsley, these are swing trades we're looking at right now. Um, if that happens, then sometimes I'll get stopped out on trades or sometimes I'll get filled at a better price. But that's why I use limit orders almost always. Stop limit or limit buy. So it'll prevent me from getting filled at a price that I don't want to get filled at. Simple as that, my man. Limits are very, very useful instruments. Yeah, brother, my pleasure. A lot more for me and you to learn together. I had a great time chatting with you today. Here's WPZ, Williams Partners. Looks toasty. I like that. Williams Partners. Um, I like this little S curve off the 200. I like this close. Uh, let me go look at this on the monthly chart. Monthly chart looks good. I like this. Look at that S curve. Good grief. Retest. Get action. Curve into the 10. Mm. That is nice. Don't have any position on this one, but if I did, I would probably be in bullish and I would keep holding. I was in WPZ, it looks nice. All right, next on the list is Under Armour and then Walmart. Under Armour, I'm sorry, going a little bit faster. UAA weekly chart. This is one that is breaking out of its accumulation phase. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a double bottom on a weekly. Close with the neckline, retest on the neckline. It's above all of its moving averages. It took some time. I initially thought it was going to bounce over here, and it did not. A bunch of people got stopped out here. Thankfully, they avoided this, unless your name was Justin Jeffrey. But he learned a lot from that. <laughs> right, Jay? So Justin got burned on Under Armour, learned a big lesson, and it is coming back to crush it entirely. Um, I like the higher moves, and I like this little pullback, so it could be, it could be nice. Uh, here's the daily charts, and that's a beautiful pullback to the 20. That's solid. I'm not going to take this one personally because I haven't planned it. I'll put it on the list for tomorrow just in case. But you've either bought off the 20 already, so you're already in two or three days ago, or you're about to get in. I like it. Richard Berry, how are you, man? I've missed you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Sonic, sure, and then Under Armour, great. All right, I, I can kind of dig that. I will come back to it tomorrow. Justin J said, I had a note, buy within the 50 cross of the 200, but I missed it. No way. Did you? <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> Brutal. Jeff says, can you enter a trailing stop on a falling stock? Trailing stop buy on a falling stock. Uh, yeah, man, you can do anything. Absolutely. Cheryl says, call out the ones we set up so I can make sure I got them. Absolutely. So Cheryl, I think Ashley's going to be hooking you up today. All the ones that are official uh, are going to be in this worksheet right here. Jeff, as far as how, uh, call your broker and ask them. 
I'm not saying that to be an a-hole. I'm just saying that all brokers are a little different. So you got to find out if that's even a capability in your broker, first of all. Uh, then if you figure out if it's possible, um, then it comes down to the strategy, right? Like what type of strategy are you going to apply and how do you get triggered in and where, right? Is it with a gap? So email me. We can talk more about that. And uh, over the next few weeks and months, we can help you fine tune that. Remember, folks, trading is a skill that you can use for the rest of your life. Don't let one week or don't let $179 stop you from years and years of learning, growing, progressing, and making crazy fun money. All right? So, yeah, Jeff, email me. We'll talk about it or let me know. But it's, it's all going to depend on your broker to what capabilities they offer. So Under Armour, we're going to look at it tomorrow. We'll see if it looks good. Um, Lex on the list. Walmart, Walmart, WNT uh, looks a little bullish, kind of. I was talking about this the other day. If you're looking for a long-term play, this is a morning star on Walmart. Again, not going to take this trade personally. This is just my analysis on it. Uh, this could be a swing trade on Walmart. If you're looking at playing, if you were looking at going bullish on Walmart, that's how I would right above the high of that bearish candle, that little morning star. Here's the hourly and yep, I'll just put that right there. And in fact, you could do the stop limit on that one. Boom, boom, boom. Darren says, any Canadians in the room have recommendations for brokers? You're about to get a whole list, Darren. So Canadians go. <laughs> Here's the daily chart. And uh, Thinkorswim and Interactive Brokers is what I would say. Um, Quest Trade is all kinds of awful, but that's just my opinion. Lisa says, guess what? The other big stock has never made it back to its 2000 high. It's not Walmart. Which one is it? At least I don't think it's Walmart. So Walmart had a high 2070. Ah, uh, yes, AT&T, you are correct. You are correct. Uh, maybe even Ford also. Good call, Lita. You're absolutely right. Um, what I like about Walmart here as well, again, longer term, is you got a one, two, three. This is the wave four. Wave fours are ugly. They're choppy. They take a long time. But at least you have a good timing if you're looking at buying Walmart. You have a general idea of where it is. If you want to do something longer term, you can put some protective puts down here at 77 or 74. But uh, it probably has a little bit longer to go. I would use protective puts rather than stops, but I think Walmart could really crush. Applied materials, AMAT, uh, it did in fact trade down to a support. Again, don't have any position on AMAT, but a few of you do. This is a solid Solid morning star reversal. So if anybody was going to play AMT, this would be one way you could do it on the daily chart. Again, I'm not going to play this one personally, at least not yet. I haven't planned on doing it, so I got to put on the list for tomorrow. Justin said he's going to add to it. All right. Uh, after hours, we're already up. So that looks good. In fact, that's going to go on the list for tomorrow morning as well. I might day trade the mess out of that one. If that can hold that gap, that'll be a pretty, a very pretty. Let me rephrase. Anthony, where are you? <laughs> hey, Rick, get those call options ready. Kinsley, that gap up tomorrow. If, keyword if, it opens up there, get ready to rock. That's going to be a fun gap. Fun gap. Uh, Charles, anything for you, man? Okay. Uh, I got maybe five, 10 minutes left. Let me go through the rest. CSCO, hanging on by the skin of our teeth. Um, I'm not gonna let this one do what Hewlett Packard Enterprise did to me. There's no reason for it to break below here. Moving the stop up to 43.35 on Cisco Systems for anyone in that. The market's been very nice and bullish and the trades that we've been in uh, haven't been working. So updated stop. There you go. 
Sylvan says, Jeremy, I'm three sessions in. I haven't heard you mention market sentiment or trade wars with China. Uh, I guess it would define, tell me your definition of market sentiment. Cause I think that's, I think that's all I talk about, but I have not, I mentioned trade wars with China a little bit on Tuesday and a little bit on Monday. Uh, mentioning that they're not really a concern. Uh, they're just, they're already factored into price. That's what's causing volatility. Most of the tariffs aren't going to affect any e-commerce companies like Alibaba um, or anything that's streaming, especially if it's traded in China, almost exclusively like IQ and Tencent Holdings and Billy Billy. But you are correct. If it boils down to anything, it's all about the charts. You can save a lot of time not worrying about the news. Someone says, all right, Jeremy, love new session. You're on fire, man. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. We only have a few more to go. Sorry I'm going a little bit long. British Petroleum. Woo! BP making it back to that support. Jesse James Levan, congrats on your covered call. Uh, folks, this is one of my favorite cheaper companies. Um, if you have a small account, I love trading BP. I would personally consider, uh, I do love BP long term. This is this would be it. Watch for a little bit of a buy here. And again, this would be like an investment. You got 3,000 bucks, so that's all the money you got in the world. At this support, I'll be buying some and more or less just hold it till it goes higher. It pays dividends, it is BP. It will be a matter of time before it bounces up. Um, here's the weekly chart right off the 10. It's out of support. Here's the hourly, right? So it trade down to the support on the hourly two or three times. So I like this level on BP. I'm not saying you have to buy, but what I am saying is this is a good level if you're looking at snagging it. Cheryl says, Jeremy, so the price is above the entry on Dropbox, so we're looking for a pullback. We are. That's why we set up a limit buy. Yep. Ash says, are we playing a bullpit spread on BP? No, we're not. There's not enough premium on British Petroleum for a put sale. I might, I'm sorry, bullpit spread. I might do a put sale at 41. Let me go check and see if there's any premium over there. BP, come back over here. Uh, July 41, nope, no money. There's only 15 cents right there, not enough. I love it, but there's not enough money. I want at least 40 cents. So I'm gonna keep waiting on British Petroleum. Petroleum. Sounds like a Harry Potter wizard type of magic spell. Anyway, BP is out of support. If you have a smaller account or even a larger account, look to buy that support. Baidu, whoo, B-I-D-U, <laughs> Expecto Petroleum. Here's the weekly chart. I like the lower shadow, it looks good. Daily chart, you gotta love that hammer candle and you have to like the retest today. Here's the long terms. Um, I have zero position on Baidu, but uh, I'll be bullish to neutral. How much time I got? Man, I got a coaching session in 10 minutes, but I think she might even be here. Let me go look at Baidu. Tanya, tell me if you're here. Um, Baidu, let me go look at long terms on the other charts. 235 July. 235, we have a dollar setting for us. You're only gonna get 25 cents on a $5 margin. That's 5% premium. Nope, not doing anything on Baidu. I don't see any trade right now other than some type of bullish move, potentially very short term on the hourly, but I'd wait. All right, next on the list is Micron. We know Micron is moving. Uh, MU had a bearish candle. It's gapping up solid. What were you guys freaking out about? There are all these notes in Micron like, oh no, it's going lower. <laughs> it's up 2%. It's gapping up to 6048, almost a non-event actually on MU, which is amazing for those people who have put sales. Phenomenal job. So those put sales can be pretty much worthless tomorrow. And if Micron tomorrow can open above 6141, she's gonna roll. She's gonna continue higher, I'm sorry. She's gonna keep going up. But if it does not, uh, I don't know, it's bullish to neutral, we're making higher highs and higher lows. The trend is bullish. Keep making money on those put sales. Buy the dip on Micron. 
it looks nice. I don't really see anything to talk about on MU. I did look at Apple yesterday and Apple did not do what I wanted it to do. Um, I wanted it to be an inside day candle today and then I'm gonna take it bullish. It did not do that. So I'm gonna keep waiting on Apple. Uh, obviously, as you know, 98% of traders should have some position on Apple. I've been talking about Apple for three to four years. And uh, anyway, Ash says, why do we need an inside day candle? Because we had a bearish gap and go yesterday and I wanted a little bit more pressure to build on it before I take it directionally bullish. Um, I do think Apple will continue higher. So here's the hourly chart. That's just me planning 18 hours in advance. That's all I wanted to do. I'm just creating a plan for the future. So we have some resistance. I'm hoping Apple hangs out and then breaks higher tomorrow. So I'll look at Apple pretty much every day. But if it breaks above that resistance, short term swing trade, sure, try it. Long term investment though, can't go wrong with Apple. It's the most profitable company in the world. 210 covered call, expiring worthless on July. Sylvan says, I'm totally buying your program, Jeremy. Looking forward to joining your team full time. Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Sylvan's in. We've already had four people sign up. If you want to continue, I love it. Hop in, get in, let's do this. Apple, no trade for today. We'll look at Apple on Friday or, you know, we look at Apple pretty much every day. Um, four left. FedEx, getting wrecked. So FedEx uh, got down on earnings, traded down, blew through that lower shadow yesterday. Uh, believe it or not though, Here's the five minute chart. I know it's a little bit hard to see. Look to go long FedEx tomorrow. And for whoever's looking at playing it. And if it breaks this support, then you can go bearish or get stopped out. But if that support holds, I mean, go long. Obviously it's a nice little bullish trend. Um, here's the bullish trend on FedEx. We are really retesting, but you did have a pretty decent bearish gap down yesterday. So if we, if we do not bounce, I'm going to put FedEx on my list for tomorrow morning as well. Already have a long list for tomorrow. Wow. So if we do not bounce on FedEx and we break lower, let's trade it bearish and it likely will trade all the way down into 240. Uh, these stocks were added BZUN. Uh, keep, I mean, the next target is $80 and 19 cents. Stay in bullish. Should, should be pretty obvious, it's a bullish trend. Phenomenal bullish gap and go, hammer candle yesterday, Falco sold a put, Falco, I hope you feel good about yourself, man. I hope you have an attorney, because you're gonna need it, because you murdered BZUN. Ash also sold some puts, congrats, very well done. Uh, if you're not in BZUN, ladies and gentlemen, buy the dip, boom, boom. Maybe it works, but the next target is $80.19. She will continue higher. Square, a lot of people sold some covered calls on Square, as did I. 75 July for 67 cents filled. I will be flabbergasted if we make it up to 75, but all things could happen. That is the covered call that I would consider selling if you're going to sell one on Square. This is a retest gap. Ash has an $80 covered call. Wow. Sharon said she made some change on some calls. Congrats, Sharon. Um, at this point on Square, buy the next dip, ladies and gentlemen, either on the daily or the hourly. Uh, I pulled into the 50 yesterday, the day before, the day before, the day before. If it happens again, look to buy the dip. Um, I want it probably off of the 100 this time. James, is, James has a cost basis of $18, my man. James is making so much money he's gonna have to burn it. So anyway, SQ, if you're not in, not the time to be in. Uh, this one will go to triple digits, I agree. Just a matter of time. Keep holding until you throw up if you got square. Next on the list, B-I-L-I, pull them back. Beautiful. Did it hit the 20 today? Nope. Um, it is gapping up very small pre-market. Very, very small. Um, I want Billy Billy to pull back a little bit farther. Something like this. Let's look at this one on Friday and see what she's doing. I agree with all of you. 
Most of you who played Billy Billy made an absolute fortune. Let's look to buy this dip and see if it works. Um, that's on the list. And then last but not least, Carbon Black. CBLK. Gorgeous. Hit a target. Um, and is now pulling back. So Carbon Black. Yeah, let this one pull down a little bit farther. A little bit farther. This is a one, two, three, some kind of wave four. This one would be a buy the dip opportunity on Carbon Black. We'll come back to this one on Friday. CBLK, and we'll see where we can play it. I like it off this old high. Uh, we will look at PVTL tomorrow. Nothing has really changed. What else you guys want to look at tomorrow? That's all the time I have today. 90 minute class. Sorry, we're a little bit long. There's just a lot of you here, and I want to do more teaching than just overall trade setups. So I'm doing my best to answer questions and all that stuff. I don't think anyone's going to complain. Ash says it's a little in the red on PBTL. Is it? It depends on where you bought, I guess. But uh, I mean, I had a big, I had a pullback today. I'm, I'm gonna give it some time. We'll see. It should work. CRM, Workday, HubSpot. Tomorrow's Transportation Thursday, by the way. Carvana, Lockheed Martin. I have a lot of other things written down on the other computer, but I can't get them right now. Raytheon, Southwest. Sylvan says, amazing session. Thank you so much. Benjamin says, those cues are creeping higher. I may be joining Real Life Train tomorrow. Yeah, you will. JD.com, Hawaiian Airlines. Ryan, I appreciate that. Google. All right, team, I appreciate you all being here. I know this sounds crazy, but the free week does end on Friday. If I can't convince you between Monday and Friday to join Real Life Trading, even if it's just for a few weeks or a few months, uh, I can't convince you to do anything. <laughs> you only pour your heart and soul into so much. So if I can't do it by Friday, I did my best. It's worth it, ladies and gentlemen. It's worth it. You're awesome. I'll see you later. Until next time, love life, live life, trade it. Bye.